I'm just, I'm just heartbroken, very heartbroken. A long time family business has gone down in flames. Fire sweeping through a popular Northwest Side restaurant early this morning. We have the story at noon. Ukrainian forces are doing what they can to stall Russia's continued attack. Meanwhile, here in San Antonio, efforts to help those overseas taking place right now. How you can contribute coming up. Live from KSA 12, the news at noon starts right now. A big fire creating a big loss for the fans of a popular Northwest Side restaurant. That longtime business, Hakala Mexican Restaurant, went up in flames and smoke this morning, then burned for hours. Katrina Weber reports in the middle of it all, firefighters faced yet another pressing situation. There seemed to be no amount of water enough to quench these thirsty flames. Once they broke through the top of this building in the 600 block of West Avenue, there was no turning back. Different attic spaces and roofs on top of each other, so it was very difficult for us to get to the fire. The building had been home to Hakala Mexican restaurant since 1949. Within just a few hours, an area treasure went up in flames. Fire crews initially found just a small fire in smoke around 6.30 this morning, but it quickly spread. The restaurant was not open at the time. There was no one inside. It was full of memories, though, for Cynthia Lambert, who saw her father build this business from the ground. As time went on, it kept growing. The governor's been here. The mayor's been here. We've had celebrities. They also had about 50 employees who now are out of work. After weathering tough times, including the pandemic, Lambert never thought fire would be their downfall. I don't know what we're going to do now, but anyway, we do thank all the customers. Investigators still don't know how the fire started. Fighting a fire like this requires every bit of their attention, but in the middle of it all, fire crews found themselves dealing with this crash. Police say the driver of the pickup wasn't seriously hurt. He had a medical episode. It took hours to knock down the flames. And once the smoke clears, the rest of the building also may have to be knocked down. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And we've just learned from the owner, Cynthia Lambert, that nearby La Fogata restaurant has offered to hire all her displaced workers. La Fogata is also hosting them for lunch. New at noon, people living in a north side apartment complex waking up to find police in their parking lot. This after a woman was shot and then one of the shooters took a child. The investigation started around 7 this morning in the 13,800 block of Dreamwood Drive. That's near Nacogdoches and O'Connor Roads. Right now, police are questioning several people to figure out what happened, and they do know someone shot a woman. She will be okay. No one else hurt. Right now, officers are trying to find out how many suspects were involved. They say that it appears that one of the alleged shooters took off with a child and it's unclear if the child's been found nearby, but police said all the children in the area have been accounted for. A stop at the gas station turns into a rush to the hospital following an early morning shooting. San Antonio police say a man was shot outside a Shell gas station over in the 2600 block of Northwest Loop 410, not far from Vance Jackson Road. Stephen Cabasos tells us how this led to a search for the person who pulled the trigger. Now, this Shell gas station is a typical stop for anyone that's looking to fuel up, but one man decided to take off on foot. According to San Antonio police, he shot an unsuspecting man, which later turned this gas station into a crime scene. Now, this all happened after 8 this morning. According to police, a man believed to be in his mid-30s was pumping gas when he was approached by another man, then shot. The gunman ran from the scene, and police searched the area. They later found him at Fennell and Panda just a few blocks over. That man was taken into police custody, but it's not clear what charges he's facing. Now, as for that other man, he was rushed to University Hospital in critical condition. San Antonio police say that they're still not clear on a motive. They have to review surveillance video and speak to witnesses as the investigation does continue. Reporting here on the Northwest Side, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police cracking down on prostitution, rounding up men who they say were attempting to solicit those services. The arrest happened on the city's west side yesterday afternoon and evening. Close to half a dozen men, possibly more, were rounded up. All of them are facing the type of charges that would be applied to the customers involved in prostitution. 
The men who were rounded up range in ages from their 20s to their 40s. One of them also is charged with possession of marijuana. All of the men arrested were taken to jail. Some of them have already posted bond and been released. More arrests could come as the operation continues. A fierce battle by Ukrainian forces appears to be interfering with Russian advances into Ukraine. However, Russian forces are continuing their, bombard their bombardment, hitting a growing number of civilian targets, like a theater that was serving as a shelter for people, including children. ABC's Ian Panel is in Kyiv with the details. It's three weeks to the day since Russia's invasion began, and this morning the British Ministry of Defence releasing its battlefield assessment, saying that it believes that Russia's invasion has stalled on all fronts. Interestingly, the Ukrainians are now saying that they've regrouped and they're going on the counter-offensive in a number of locations, especially around the capital, Kyiv. Meanwhile, we are seeing Russians continuing this relentless, indiscriminate bombardment, in particular in the besieged port city of Mariupol, which is been one of the hardest hit, a drama theatre which was housing, we believe, over a thousand people sheltering from those attacks. That was hit directly, even though it was clearly marked in front and behind the building in Russian that children were on site. Now, we know that rescue workers are trying to go through the rubble, trying to find people. No reports of casualties at the moment. But of course, I think the fear is that that will be the case. Meanwhile, President Zelensky addressing the US Congress and President Biden and the American people, thanking them for their support, reiterating his need, his desire for a no-fly zone across the country. Of course, President Biden announcing that $800 million military aid package. The hope is that that's going to include ever stronger air defense systems, which is something that the Ukrainians desperately need. Meanwhile, we do have these ongoing negotiations between the two sides, some tentative signs of optimism that maybe there is the makings of a peace deal there, but it's still very, very early days. And for now, there is nothing concrete as this war grinds on into its fourth week. Ian Panel, ABC News in Kyiv, Ukraine. Meanwhile, here in San Antonio, people touched by stories like that, they continue to show their support for Ukraine. This is a live look at a medical supply drive happening at the Hilton Garden Inn at the Rim right now. The nonprofit Ukrainian San Antonio is spearheading the effort. They say that they've done a couple of similar drives, collecting things like baby food and diapers. But right now, what they're collecting are medical supplies, bandages and dressings. It's a sad state of affairs. If you want to buy supplies and donate, you can go to ukrainiansanantonio.com. The organization lists what they need, and there's a link so that you can buy those supplies through Amazon and donate them that way. The drive ends at 8 o'clock tonight. The San Antonio area is still experiencing a blood shortage, and today you can help by donating. The Wonderland of America's Mall is hosting a blood drive today. It's being held from 1 this afternoon until 6 this evening. Those who donate will get movie tickets or vouchers. And the Alamos Regional Mobility Authority says it will collaborate with Elon Musk's company for a transportation project between the airport and downtown. The Boring Company's proposal was picked after the Alamo RMA board considered proposals from five companies. Alamo RMA staff will meet with the Boring Company in the coming weeks to move the project forward, which is estimated to cost well over $200 million. The company has been working for years to eventually bring high speed or hyperloop to travel to several markets. So far, the only operational loop is in Las Vegas at the Las Vegas Convention Center. Gusty winds, dry air, real problem. Grass fire threat today, even into tomorrow. Some gusty winds in San Antonio tomorrow, too. We'll talk all about it coming up. The Spurs picked up a much-needed win last night in a game that went down to the final play. Larry has more later in sports. An organization that wants to help small businesses thrive and succeed in a number of ways here in the Alamo City. It's now offering tips to help owners attract workers. We'll explain after the break. Nightlife on St. Mary Street could be changing. Today, businesses and neighbors in the Tobin Hill community are going to meet and try to come to an agreement. People in the area have been complaining about all the trash and fights and damage to the property. 
There is a proposal to limit parking in the area and hire staff to pick up the trash. Another idea is having a bar or have bar owners share the cost of hiring more off duty officers for that area. There are a lot of job opportunities out there, so how can small business owners compete? According to one organization, it's all about the hiring process. I spoke with them about the steps businesses can take in order to get the workers they need. Whether it's two weeks or three months, we've all been through a drawn out hiring process. Today, small business consultant Stephanie Scheller says a straightforward and quick onboarding system is the way to go in a competitive hiring market. So I think a lot of times companies feel like a long drawn out process is going to net them someone who desperately wants to work there. And the opposite issue tends to happen, especially in today's hiring world. She says a lengthy hiring can snuff the excitement out of someone who was otherwise motivated to work for you. So by the time they end up truly employed, they are tired of all of the shenanigans and the runaround that they've received. Scheller says the days of a four to five week hiring period are over. You may be able to get away with that if you're someone like Google, who is known for not only having incredible pay, but having really good work-life balance, having amazing amenities and benefits, they can get away with a really long process. But so here's what she says you should do. First, figure out how many interviews you want, then establish the quickest way of getting applicants from point A to point B. And then get that in place so that it's passed off. All the notes are put in a single central location so everyone can see them, review them. And the final decision maker has the ability to make that decision just based on those notes. So you can get someone from prospective employee to actual employee quickly and keep them excited about working for you. Another problem Aria Scheller says is that a lot of small businesses don't have a hiring process at all. She adds an applicant's first experience with your company is during that initial interview. So the idea is to have a quick, effective and efficient hiring process. For more on the story, visit KSET.com. Live look outside. What happened to the sun? It hit away. Yeah, it's hidden. <laughs> Yeah, these slow clouds, man, they will stress you out as a meteorologist. They have, they have poured in here. They've stuck around for a while. We still think we're going to get some sun this afternoon. We will get some sun this afternoon, but it's going to take a little while longer to get rid of these clouds. We're going to get some gusty winds, too. That's another big part of the forecast. And, of course, the drought. We continue to see the aquifer fall down half a foot today to 657.3. NOAA released its spring outlook today, calling for more drought heading forward. We'll talk more about that. And looking at the pollen count, there's a lot there, but everything's low. Molds, oak, ash, juniper, hackberry. A look at that dry forecast coming up. It's 1217. Thank you for joining us. The weather, the sun is hiding. Temperatures taking a dip, but I think they may go back up. I'm not sure. What can we plan or how should we plan? I'm going to plan on pinching Justin <laughs> is what I'm going to do. You don't need I don't see any green, Justin. Uh, but I can't wear green because of the green wall, but I do have ah. green on my socks. And if I remember enough to show you my socks, I would. But I can't. Well, when you get, when, yeah, get over to the wall, you can show them to us. But I, then again, you they, wouldn't see the green. They disappear. Yeah. I have avocado <laughs> socks, I promise. You can see it on social media. Okay. At any rate, we were talking about the cloud cover, guys. You're right. The cloud cover is filled in. And that has kept temperatures down for now. I think we're going to see uh, some temperatures that are going to be very warm out west and maybe not as warm here in San Antonio purely because of this cloud cover. You can see where it sits right now. Now, the, these clouds should thin out a little bit uh, later this afternoon, but at the moment we are overcast here in town. 67 degrees at the airport, 66 Helotus, 68 Rio Medina, Las Maples in the sun, 68 there, 69 in Uvalde and sunny for you. Cloudy in Seguin, though, 65 there. There's the scene, a blanket of cloud cover over top of us. Up to 72, Stenson, 69, Kelly, 68, Randolph. Notice the winds. We've got south-southeasterly winds to southerly winds, and that has ushered in some moisture for now. That is also why we saw some fog this morning. This will be short-lived. We look at the dew points and how they evolve today. So we're going forward in time, and notice we have a dry line that sets up. What is a dry line? Well, it just basically separates the more humid air from the very dry air, which is going to be out to our west. Dew points may stay up a bit here in San Antonio, which will keep temperatures from getting out of control. But as you go west of this dry line, where you see these dew points in the, the teens and 20s, that's very, very dry air. We're going to get some gusty winds with that. And so those two things combined, 
make for a fire threat. You can see some of the gusts now. We're seeing gusts to 18 in Kerrville, 24 in Fredericksburg, 32 in Pleasanton. And by the way, everybody is going to see gusty winds as we get into tomorrow. That will be an issue for your Friday morning. In the meantime, with the gusty winds and dry air out west, there is your red flag warning. Red flag warning basically means we have a high fire threat. Low humidity gusts to 35. Outdoor burning is not recommended. And any fire that develops will spread rapidly. So that's why we've got to be so, so careful. Here's a look at the forecast temperatures. Those clouds eventually fall apart. And then if we uh, once we get into the sun, temperatures should make it up into the low 80s. But we've lowered these numbers because the cloud cover is hanging on longer than expected. Out west where the sun will be in full force today and we have the drier air, you'll see some 90s likely on the map. Here's a look at the wind gust forecast. Here in San Antonio, we're going to have a few gusts this afternoon. Winds may die down some tonight, but as we get into the morning hours tomorrow with a, with a front coming through, gusts up to 40 miles per hour are possible Friday morning. Keep that in mind as you head out the door for work and school. It's going to be uh, pretty windy, or if you're off for spring break, you're going to be out and about. Know that those gusts will be up there, especially for the first half of the day. And the reason for that, storm system coming through, we miss out on the rain. We just get the wind with this one. There is a system, though, behind that. The weekend's quiet, but a system behind that that moves in on Monday. This, I think, gives us a little more opportunity for rain. 40% shot is what we're looking at right now. And just based on what we're looking at with the dynamics in the atmosphere, there could be a few strong storms, too. Now, I think the best shot at that will be to our north and east places like DFW, Tyler. But there is an opportunity, a window, for us to get a couple of strong storms late on Monday. And that's something we'll be watching. 74 tomorrow behind a front, so it's a little cooler. 78 Saturday, 76 Sunday, some cool mornings. And there's your 40% chance of rain on Monday with a high of 79, guys. All right, thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. And we know, of course, a lot of stuff happening in the world of sports. Mm -hmm. Spurs playing the Thunder. What do you have for us, Larry? Yeah, the Spurs led by 16 points in the third quarter last night. And Thunder then... took the lead. And then the Spurs <laughs> held off the Thunder thanks to a fantastic three-pointer from Lonnie Walker the fourth. We've got it. And elsewhere last night, Steve Kerr was very upset with Marcus Smart. We'll show you why coming up. I thought it was a dangerous play. I thought I thought Marcus uh, dove into Steph's knee, and, I, and that's what I was upset about. Warriors head coach Steve Kerr lashed out at Boston guard Marcus Smart for hurting Steph Curry last night in big board sports. Kelvin Johnson and the Spurs picked up a much needed win last night as they chased a play in tournament berth. The Spurs made a season high 19 three pointers against the Thunder, but Kelvin sinking a team best five of those. Fourth quarter now, less than 15 seconds ago, Spurs up by one. DeJounte Murray will shoot, and he misses. The Thunder get the ball to Alexei Pokoshevsky for a layup at the other end, and the lead 120 to 119 with 4.8 seconds to go. But have no fear because Lonnie Walker the fourth is here. Off the inbounds pass, he makes the game winning three with less than two seconds remaining. OKC got one more look but couldn't convert and the Spurs win at 122 to 120. Here's Lonnie on that last shot. I know that the main focal point was going to be DJ so I was going to be open somehow some way. Um, I first went to the corner um, seeing that you know there wasn't anyone open I kind of just sprinted to the ball and uh, it came to me. It's funny because um, literally right before the timeout Josh Richardson Josh Richardson called it. He's like, it's going to go to you, and you're going to knock it down. I said, all right, I got you. So uh, somehow we manifested that today. We made threes, and it bailed us out. But we were not bailed out by good basketball. The threes bailed us out, and Lonnie made a hell of a shot at the end. Joshua did, made a good defensive play in the corner on the last play. But other than that, I think we got outplayed. Spurs will host the Pelicans tomorrow night at 7.30. Before the game last night, the Spurs announced that forward Doug McDermott is expected to miss the rest of the regular season with a grade three right ankle sprain. He suffered the injury earlier in the first quarter of the Spurs loss to the Pacers on Saturday. Doug was traded by the Pacers to the Spurs in August, but injuries and COVID limited him to just 51 games this season. A grade three ankle injury involves a complete ligament tear and can take three to six months to heal per sportsmd.com. Now Boston won a goal 
Golden State 110 to 88 last night. In the process, Warriors star guard Steph Curry was hurt on this play early in the second quarter when Marcus Smart dove into the legs of Curry while going for a loose ball. Curry left the game and he did not return due to left foot soreness. Now, he suffered a sprained ligament in his left foot that will sideline him indefinitely as reported by The Athletic. A lot of respect for Marcus. He's a hell of a player, gamer, um, competitor. I coached him in uh, the World Cup a few summers ago. Um, we talked after the game. Um, so, you know, we're, we're good. But I thought it was a dangerous play. And, you know, just let him know. I'm sure I'm going to get called dirty. Um, I mean, it's their opinion. Like I said, I know who I am. My teammates know. And, you know, my colleagues know I'm not a dirty player. It's also being reported by multiple outlets that Curry has a sprained toe and will be out three weeks, which is essentially the remainder of the regular season. Ouch, a sprained toe. We're wishing him a speedy recovery. Yeah, and, that hurts. Uh, good game for the Spurs. Not good basketball, according to Pop, yeah, but they, they won the game. I got the dub, and that's what matters. That's right. For some people, the perfect glass of beer is a full glass. However, there might be a trick to getting a picture-perfect pour of Guinness this St. Patrick's Day. A look at the six-step process in the next half hour. The Federal Reserve is raising interest rates to fight inflation. How the change could affect your finances still ahead. New today at 5, it is said that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. For some, it's a quick bowl of cereal or even a cereal bar on the go. Others skip it all together. 12 in your size, Marilyn Moritz has the expert scoop on healthy breakfast. That's also easy to make. It's Today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. A pleasanted high school graduate among the people killed in that fiery head-on collision on Tuesday night in West Texas. A total of nine people died, including six members of a college golf team and their coach. ABC's Rena Roy with an update. From 13 to 39 years old, nine people suddenly killed in this horrific West Texas crash Tuesday, including six college golfers and their coach. The mother of 18-year-old college freshman Lacey Stone says she had big dreams and lived life to the fullest. She was the life of the party. She loved to sing and she was just always having the best time. Investigators say a pickup truck crossed the center line and slammed headfirst into the van carrying the University of the Southwest men's and women's golf teams on their way back to New Mexico hours after playing in a tournament. All units uh, have got wrecked vehicles on both sides of the highway, uh, fully involved vehicles. A family friend calling 22-year-old Jackson Zinn an amazing human. Riding devastated does not do justice. We just had their fundraiser on Saturday. It's just, it's just really surreal. Both passed Passengers inside the truck were also killed. Two other students were rushed to the hospital by helicopter in critical condition. The NTSB and the Texas Department of Public Safety are investigating the crash. A big part of the investigation, why did that pickup cross the center line? Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Pleasanton High School graduate Travis Garcia was among those killed in that crash. He was a member of the men's golf team at the University of the Southwest in New Mexico. Right now on KSET.com, you can read about Pleasanton ISD's athletic director's reaction to this tragedy. 12.32, taken outside on live cam. It's 68 degrees. If you're planning on making your way out to the pool, I think you can still make it. Yeah with no uh, sunscreen needed, apparently. Not right now, anyways. Uh, but as you get into the afternoon, you, you may definitely need it. We, we expect that the sun will pop back out. Cloudy skies right now. It is overcast here in San Antonio, but there's a, there's a sharp line where you get into some clearing. Right around Hondo, Bandera, you get up to Kerrville. The sun is out now, and these clouds are trying to shift east. We're seeing some breaks in these clouds, especially down to the south and west of San Antonio, but it's going to take a while longer, and these clouds certainly are holding on longer than we expected them to. So that's going to keep temperatures down a little bit. If you're out where the sun is, you're going to see some much warmer numbers today. A little closer look here at Bear County. And yes, we are underneath that overcast sky as it stands right now. Where the sun is out, where we've got some gusty winds and some very dry air today, there is another risk of grass fires. Seems like for the 
second or third day here in a row we're dealing with this situation. Low humidity gusts to 35 miles per hour and any grass fire that we see it's, it's going to spread pretty quickly just to, uh, based on the conditions that we have and it's not just today we may see that again tomorrow as winds pick up even here in San Antonio. So let's get you the hour by hour forecast. I still think we've got clouds hanging around through at least one o'clock, then maybe some breaks two, three o'clock. And we've brought down high temperatures just based on the cloud cover. Uh, 82 by 5 p.m., 81, 6 p.m., 80 by 7 p.m. And then you get in the clear skies tonight as the front comes through. Winds will be generally light around, say, 10, 11, midnight, but by tomorrow morning, they really are going to pick up. We're going to get some gusty winds right here in town. Gusts of 40 miles per hour are possible tomorrow morning. We'll talk more about that. And the drought monitor's in, and it's not good news, guys. We'll have a look at that, too, coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Justin. Today, the United Nations will hold an emergency meeting to discuss the worsening humanitarian crisis. According to the UN, more than 3 million people have fled Ukraine as Russian forces target civilians with relentless airstrikes. Poland has accepted more refugees than any other country. The mayor of Warsaw says it needs assistance in order to keep helping people. What I'm asking all of my friends in the Western world, help us out and let's do it in a way which is well planned. Enough of uh, improvisation. We need a plan. Two thirds of people fleeing the war in Ukraine have gone to Poland. Others have fled to Romania, Moldova and Hungary. President Joe Biden and his Chinese counterpart are scheduled to have a discussion tomorrow. White House Press Secretary Jin Saki says that this talk is part of an effort to keep the lines of communication open between the two countries. Our announcement also comes shortly after a U.S. diplomatic cable said that China might be interested in providing military and financial help to Russian President Vladimir Putin and his invasion of Ukraine. The last known time that Biden and the Chinese president had a conversation was in November when they held a three and a half hour virtual summit. St. Patrick's Day likely might involve a glass of your favorite Irish drink. And for many people, that means a pint of Guinness. How to get the perfect pour of this iconic drink today coming up. Last night in women's college basketball, Incarnate Word played Howard looking to advance in the NCAA tournament. Larry has more later in sports. The Federal Reserve increasing interest rates by a quarter of a point. From credit cards to car loans, we're going to like take a look at how the rate hike could affect your wallet. It's coming up after the break. Listen to this. For the first time since 2018, the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates by a quarter percentage point. The Fed also hinted that more increases are ahead this year as it works to tame soaring inflation. The move comes despite the growing economic uncertainty in the U.S. caused by the war in Ukraine. CNN's Jen Sullivan takes a look at what higher interest rates could mean for your bank account. Goodbye, ultra-low interest. The Federal Reserve is raising interest rates by a quarter of a percent. Ongoing increases in the target range will be appropriate. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell making the announcement on Wednesday, saying it's a necessary move to combat soaring inflation. Despite the war in Ukraine, supply chain delays and COVID-19 still darkening America's economic horizon. The American economy is very strong and well positioned to handle tighter monetary policy. The idea is that as borrowing costs rise, consumers will spend less and ultimately lower demand will bring prices down to more normal levels. Interest rates stayed low throughout the pandemic to help the economy recover. But now that they're rising, financial experts say the impact will be felt widely from credit cards to car loans. Getting loans, getting uh, refinancing, uh, uh, getting your first mortgage is, is going to be a lot harder as these uh, interest rates go higher. Here's a breakdown of what you can expect. First, when it comes to credit cards, because most have a variable rate directly tied to the Fed's interest rate, experts say prepare to see your annual percentage rate rise. If you have you know, excessive credit card balances, you really want to try to address that and get that down as, as fast as possible. Also, home loans will be impacted. Experts say both long-term fixed and adjustable mortgage rates could likely climb. And finally, some private loans with a variable rate could also be impacted. Experts say now may be the best time to look into refinancing. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. Well, there you have it. Taking a look outside overcast, but still important to put on that SPF, right, Justin? It is, because I think these clouds will break up some, but we'll get some sun this afternoon. And we're, we're getting into that time of year where 
we're going to see a lot more sun and uh, it's it's going to get fairly warm today. We were expecting some pretty warm numbers. Uh, 67 so far though and, and it's going to take until those clouds burn away that we get these numbers probably up into the 70s and maybe eventually 80s. 53 degrees the low this morning records are 92 and 32 set back in 1908 and way back in 1892 we, we did get down to freezing. No freezing numbers in the forecast but we do have a chance for thunderstorms down the line and we'll take a look at that drought monitor too coming up. It is St. Patrick's Day and some folks may want to grab a pint at their favorite pub. However, if you'd rather stay at home with your Guinness, here's there's apparently a trick to pouring the perfect glass. A Guinness Brewery ambassador says it's a six step process. First, Guinness is always poured into what's known as a gravity glass to help it enhance its taste. Second, hold the glass at a 45 degree angle under the tap. When it's halfway full, straighten out the glass. Next, when it's about three quarters of the way full, turn off the tap and then let your pint settle down. That's the surge and settle. That's the nitrogen bubbles breaking out of solution and rushing to the top of the glass. Uh, when that's complete, we go back under the tap, push away from ourselves. That gives us some control over the flow of the beer. And we bring that cream to the top of the glass and just proud of the rim. Michael Reardon says you should s let it settle for exactly, listen to this, 119.5 seconds down to the science. All right. Well, some people take that super serious, like my husband. <laughs> All right. In a few hours, the San Antonio River is going to look like my dress. It's going to turn green. It's happening this afternoon from 1 to 3. And if you can't make it, there will be another chance to see the river dyed green on Saturday. The annual tradition has been happening since 1968. Also happening Saturday, you can check out the St. Patrick's Day Parade. It was actually ranked one of the best in the U.S. Online lifestyle website Thrill has compiled a list of the best places to see a St. Patrick's Day Parade, and the Alamo City came in fourth. We're following New York City, New Orleans, and Chicago. Coming in at number one, unlike other top cities, San Antonio's parade will be happening Saturday at four along the Riverwalk, and there are several other ways to celebrate. You can just head on over to ksat.com for all those details. Now, you're not going to be able to see it, but Justin Horn's weather wall is the color of my dress. True. So maybe our production crew can 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 do that little switcheroo so that we're, you don't look like you're not celebrating <laughs> yeah. St. Patty's Day. Yeah. Well, yes, we, we can't wear green meteorologists, so at least with a green wall, we can't wear green. But you should do, you should go over to the wall or so you would just disappear. I will, do, like that. I will do that. I will do that. We will do that uh, at the end of weather. OK. All right. Let's take a look at what to expect here. Clouds erode dry. Uh, very dry air settling in west of I-35. You know, these clouds have been here for a while. We thought that they would burn off a little bit earlier. They have not. They've stuck with us. That's keeping temperatures down for now. I think the big story tomorrow is going to be some gusts up to 40 miles per hour, some gusty winds here in San Antonio. And then by the weekend, looks good. We're going to get some cool mornings, some nice afternoons. It's not until early next week that we get a little bit of a pattern shift with a chance for some rain. Right now, 67 degrees and cloudy. Dew point is at 59. That number jumped up overnight and you know, led to some fog and this cloud cover with the south southeasterly wind at about 13 miles per hour. We can see those clouds very clearly now on the visible satellite picture and it's a it's a very sharp cutoff. So if you're watching from Kerrville, you're seeing the sun. Most of the western half of the viewing area is sunny. The eastern half dealing with clouds and that includes here in San Antonio underneath the clouds. We're still sitting in the 60s at this hour, 67 degrees at the airport, 66 Holotus. 69 Bandera. I think we're going to start to see these numbers out west warm up uh, fairly quickly. It's 70 right now in Uvalde, but expect that number to shoot up here over the next couple of hours. Our forecast does call for clouds to stick around now through maybe 2 o'clock before we start to see uh, the temperatures jump up with more sun. 82 by 5 o'clock, 81, 6 o'clock, 80 by 7 o'clock, 76 by 8 p.m. And then we fall into the 60s and 50s tonight. Notice the winds are fairly light going into tonight. That changes once a front comes through and that uh, well, again, will happen overnight and by tomorrow morning, those winds really pick up. Let's look at the dew points. So they have increased quite a bit and uh, that's leading to the clouds. Now we've got a dry line that's going to move east today. This will be the position around six o'clock. And this is where we have the really humid air, or the, uh, I should say more humid air to the east and then really dry air to the west. There's concerns out west because when you get that dry air, you combine it with some gusty winds, you get the fire threat. We had it yesterday. We're seeing it again today. 
and red flag warnings are in effect again today, starting at 1 p.m. and going through 10 p.m. tonight. I think we're going to see some more of these in the coming days just because of these gusty winds that are in the forecast. Gusts potentially to 40 miles per hour as we get into tomorrow morning here in San Antonio out of the northwest and dew points will fall off. So there could be a fire threat area wide tomorrow and you combine that with the, the, the drought situation too. It's bad. I mean, most of the state is now in drought, 91% of it in fact, and we're noticing now that parts of our area are in extreme drought down around Carrizo Springs. That's an area that desperately, desperately needs some rain. So we're gonna watch that. Uh, San Antonio's uh, within a severe drought and until we can get some significant rain, we're gonna continue to see the drought worsen. Reason we're getting the winds today, storm system passes uh, to our east and uh, that we missed out on the rain. Now there's one behind that that will bring us a better shot at some rain and that happens on Monday. 40% chance and right now we'll be watching for the threat of a few strong storms as well. As we look at the uh, seven day forecast, 74 Friday, 78 Saturday, 76 Sunday, some chilly mornings. There's that chance of rain on Monday morning, about a 40% shot and then uh, up to 82 on Tuesday. They're going to mess this up. I don't think it's going to Bill Land with the call. Lonnie Walker, the fourth, made a clutch three to help the Spurs win in big board sports. Just call him big shot. Lonnie Walker, the fourth, after his three-pointer with 1.8 seconds left in the game, gave the Spurs a lead for good. San Antonio made a season-high 19 three-pointers last night, and Lonnie made the biggest one to help them beat the Thunder, 122 to 120, to snap their two-game slide. Lonnie says he was going to shoot that ball no matter what, and that Josh Richardson predicted that Lonnie would go home a hero last night. Yeah, I did. I predicted it. Um, no, the timeout, you know, guys were kind of down. It was okay to have bucket up, but, uh, you know, Pop drew the play up, and I seen Lonnie was kind of one of the guys that has head down. I pulled it to the side. I was like, bro, we got another possession left. And I said, they're going to mess their coverages up. You're going to be wide open, and you're going to game it. And you're going to go home and have a good night and chill. And he started laughing, and I was like, watch. Oh, absolutely. Once I touched it, I was going to let it fly regardless, even if I had the starting five and the referees on me. He was going to go up. Go home and chill. Spurs will host the Pelicans tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. A key game is both chase a play-in spot. Now, this was the scene of Broadway 50-50 last night, a watch party for Incarnate Word. Those that couldn't make the trip to Columbia, South Carolina, cheered them on from here as the Cardinals women's basketball team made their first appearance ever in the NCAA tournament as one of the eight play-in teams for the tourney. I'm here because I want to support women's sports. Um, go Cardinals. I'm really excited to see that our program is growing. I'm a new student here, and it's cool to get to be a part of that. To have something to cheer about, you know, with people from your college and just get behind it. I mean, look at the turnout. Everyone's here having a good time. So that's what it's all about, you know, try to get back to normal, put some smiles on faces, all the good stuff. Those fans watching there saw one heck of a ball game. Final seconds of the first half. Jacqueline Moore throws it off the glass with a banker, and the Cardinals are up by two at halftime. Third quarter, Tiana Gardner makes the quick move to get to the bucket and put it up and in for a three-point lead. She led the Cardinals with 16 points. A minute to go, Cardinals down three, and the shot is off the mark, and it appears to be touched last by Howard, but after a review, the ball is called out on Incarnate Word, and Howard goes on to win 55-51, to ending the Cardinals' season. This was a tremendous run. Uh, as we told them earlier today, we've already won. You know, there, there was no pressure, you know, going into tonight's game. Of course, we would have liked to have won, but uh, to go on the run that we did just to get here to win four games in four days, and obviously tonight was our fifth game in seven days. That, that's, you know, that's obviously a little bit unique. And, uh, but I thought, you know, it, it, their competitive uh, nature never changed. They, they stayed together okay, with each other and came together at the right time of the year. Congratulations to Coach and his They did squad. well. Yes, they did. Thank you, Larry. We'll be right back. 
No, it's us. It's Don't us. forget us. Oh. Don't forget us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're we're here. Here. Okay. Right. Right. All right. I'm all excited because I'm going to put this this dress on the on the weather wall. So I'm sorry. <laughs> your yeah, your mind is elsewhere. But I'll tell you what, it is St. Patrick's Day, of course, yeah. and you've got to start off with a great Irish dance. Look at these folks dancing from the Inish School of Irish Dance. We're going to see a whole lot more from them coming up in just a couple of minutes. Y'all are fantastic. <laughs> and Jen is out live at the river because that's going to get into the spirit today, right? Oh yeah, this is where the party is at. We are at Mad Dogs right along the river. I've got a friend joining me. The largest leprechaun I've ever seen. Hey buddy, thanks for being here. We also have our green drinks for the occasion. And not too long from now, the boat will be arriving to dye the water. Look, I think they're coming right now. So we are here right as they're about to turn this river walk water green. I'm so excited. All right guys, back to you. Uh, All right, we've got some <laughs> Irish soda bread right here. Yes, and Chef Bill Corbett from the Hayden is here. Why soda? Because uh, it's made with uh, baking soda, so traditional yeast. So and this is a way that you could get a loaf of bread on the table in an hour instead of, say, like, taking the entire day to let it rise and proof and all that fun stuff. So. Oh my God, that's good. All right, it's Mike Oster Hage approved. Yes, indeed. And then you got to have something to wash this down. How about a wee dram of the Tullamore Dew? Yes, they're going to be here, and they're going to be making some good Irish cocktails on this St. Patty's Day. <laughs> all that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes. She loves it when <laughs> All right, we're still waiting on those clouds to clear. We'll get some sun, I think, later this afternoon up to 82. Look for some gusty winds tomorrow. And as promised, there she is, Miss Ursula. And this is why you can't put green this on TV. Why. And you get a pinch. Hey, I got green socks. <laughs> Disappeared. Okay, and here I go. Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> that was kind of cool. Where'd she go? I'm I, I here. didn't. There you are. So Welcome now you back. know. We, we just gave you a little TV magic. That's right. And make sure you wear green next St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> and that's all for our show now. From all of us here at KSAT 12, thank you so much for joining us because SA Live starts right now. Ursula's our leprechaun totally. today. So, yes, today on SA Live, we are seeing green. We check out Mad Dog's British Pub St. Patrick's Day sponsored event where the San Antonio River is dyed green. And there's Jen. Plus, your kids can learn competitive Irish dancing right here in the Alamo City. We'll see a performance from the Industry School of Irish Dance. And you can celebrate the day with authentic Irish cocktails made with real Irish whiskey, Slanja. <laughs> We're the Industry School of Irish Dancing in San Antonio, and you're watching SA Live. All right, hello, and happy St. Patrick's Day! That's the Industry School of Irish Dance, and they're going to give you a full performance a little later in the show. And you are not going to want to miss it. We saw them all in rehearsal. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy St. Patty's Day. I'm Mike Osterhage. And I'm Fiona Gorstiza. All right, well, here to start us off on the right step, this St. Patrick's Day is the Hayden's head chef, Bill Corbett. Hello, hello. And you always think of the Hayden as a great Jewish deli, but mm -hmm. you've taken over with the Irish in the menu, Yeah, right? he let the Irish chef loose in the back, so here we are. <laughs> so we are combining uh, Jewish and Irish cuisines together and kind of showing the relationship that they had, you know, especially with corned beef being adopted by the Irish from their Jewish neighbors in the New York when they all got over here in like the 1800s. And so they threw in the cabbage? I think that's what the Irish brought. <laughs> okay. Now, one of the dishes that we are making right here, the soda bread, and it starts off just like a, any ordinary bread, right? Yes, but you use the uh, baking soda because it's a quick-acting rice leavener okay. instead of saying natural yeast. And one of the fun things about this one is that they came across this in the early 1800s uh, from the Native Americans. They used that as their natural riser when they were making breads. And they got it from? The, no, the, the Native, Native Americans. Americans. Yeah. But I mean, where did they get the, the baking soda? Oh, from the ash, when they burned down in the fire pits, and then you had that ash laid over, and they would find that there was this natural leavener that was occurring over there. Okay, and you said that works better and easier uh, for back in the famine, and mom could get, then have to Something wait for hours, the table, and hours, yes. and hours for the yeast yeah. to, to and make so it And so traditionally okay. back then, it was without the raisins and currants, but with this one now, it kind of becomes more of a sweeter bread. So yeah. that's where you add in your uh, sugar and a little bit of raisins. And, uh, and of course, currants. what are those soaking in? Uh, those are soaking in a little bit of Tullamore Dew right now. So. <laughs> and is that just for 
That's just for St. Patrick's Day, a little extra festive. I mean, if you want to at home, I, yeah. you know, why not? <laughs> and the other thing to point out is when you're using bacon, baking soda, you use buttermilk, right? Yeah, because it needs the acidity from the buttermilk, and that's what activates the leavener. Okay, okay. so All right. this. So this, of course. So yeah, mm -hmm. so this is our Lox BLT. We've toasted the bread here in the pan, mm -hmm. and then you can take some of this aioli and slather that all on there. Okay. And what else is on the menu? So we have uh, corned beef and coleslaw, mm -hmm. uh, classic deli sandwich. We're doing a pastrami and cold cannon. So oh. you're taking the corned beef and turning it into pastrami and then putting it on top of uh, our version of a champ. So you stew down some uh, cabbage and green onions and mix that in with the mashed potatoes. Woo. And that's cold cannon? Yes. Okay. okay. All right. And once you get that all mixed up here, by the way, back to the bread, the lettuce here, this gets tomatoes. turned out onto a and we've got some noise coming from outside mm -hmm. because they Sorry are getting ready to celebrate St. Patty's Day well, out there. She's wrapping this up and then you put a little bit of bacon. Thank you. And the other trick here with the bread, when you get it all kneaded together and ready to go in, you said you have to score it across the top. Yeah, you got to cut a giant cross into it. And why is that? So I've heard three different stories on that. One is to let the devil out, the other one is <laughs> to let the demons out, and the other one is to let the fairies out. So whichever part of Ireland you're from, it probably has something different. So. And that loaf right there bakes in the oven how long? Uh, about 45 minutes at 375. Okay, and it's nice and it's got this good hard crust on the outside and it is soft and oh, just slap some butter on here and that will make you happy. Plus, given the fact there's a lot of whiskey in here, that gets cooked <laughs> off though, of course. So, right. okay. what else is on the menu over there? Oh. So yeah, so we have the corned beef, mm -hmm. the pastrami coca, and then we have a traditional Irish stew. So we take lamb and we stewed it all night and mix it in with some potatoes and carrots for everybody. So, And how long is the Irish going to be on the menu? Uh, so today is the last day. We've done it the last two days, so we're doing it three days total, and it's been really popular so far, and we are really going to be going through it tonight. So we're all getting really excited. Ooh, and here oh, we go. go. We've got lox, we've got bacon, lettuce, tomato on there. All right. And if you had to describe the Hayden to folks, how would you describe it? Uh, your friendly neighborhood Jewish diner on Broadway Street. <laughs> and you or Adam always calls it a finer diner. <laughs> and you won an award for restaurant with the good to eat anytime, anything? We were the best diner anytime. So that was the award that we got in the San Antonio Magazine. So that means breakfast, lunch, dinner, morning, noon, night. Yes. And we'll have another fun award to announce next week. So we're all really excited. So it's been, it's been a lot of fun the past year. And you've been, I mean, you're like famous. You've been on the food, or on the Cooking Channel's Food Paradise Show. What was that like? Oh, that was uh, really exciting. We had a bunch of people out, and it was just mm -hmm. fun to enjoy that with our friends and family there at the Hayden. So oh, yeah, we've been cool. a nice recognition, and uh, but it all comes from all the hard work that we've been putting in. You know, especially Adam Lambertson, the owner, and myself. I mean, we've put in a lot of long nights, especially with like Steph, our GM. And uh, we're just really excited that the work that we've been doing is starting to kind of come to fruition. So it's been really nice. You're not going to keep this sandwich on the menu? That one might be sticking <laughs> around. It, it might come back by popular demand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this needs to come back by popular demand. This is fantastic. So, okay. All right. Well, of course, for Thank more information so on the Hayden, all you have to do is head to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab where we've provided a link or just snap that QR code on your screen. Okay. So, wear in green. Thank you very very much because I've got dough all over my hands. <laughs> yeah, of course, everybody's a little bit Irish on St. Patrick's Day and everybody's wearing green, but are there any little special things you do maybe for your family on St. Patty's Day? Yes, let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. What I do is bring fun stuff to wear, like I brought Mike this, and there's a headband over there that's kind of a little, it's a little, we, we thought it was a little much. And I might put it on too. later. <laughs> See? It yeah. does. It has three different modes. <laughs> stare, at, stare at that and, yeah, so, anyway, and Jen was talking about in our meeting this morning, she made green pancakes for her kids, Aww. which got her right in the spirit to be down there on the river, because guess what? It's turning green as well. Yes, the river, of course, is dying and is sponsored by Mad Dogs. That's and right, Jen, they what are getting ready on? right now to die. The river, as you can see, it's going in right there. And everybody, this huge crowd is here because they all want to Give see one second, this. Justin. As you can see, big old crowds here. I'm not going to get too close because I don't want to fall in. But it has started. You can see the going into the water right there. So this will continue on through the day. The water will stay nice and green. And we are here stationed at Mad Dogs. I have Aaron joining me. Hello. So Aaron, this is the spot to be right now, right? Yes, it is. It's kind of crazy down here today. It's, it's really the spot to be. It's the center of the universe today. <laughs> Sorry, we have people coming oh, through. Oh, careful, wait, careful, wait, wait, wait. careful. We have our cord. Sorry, guys. We're just trying to make sure that uh, 
uh, we don't lose our live shot here. Obviously, it's very, very crowded. And um, okay, we're good. We're good now. All right. So uh, this is the place to be, though, right? Absolutely. It's Mad Dogs on the Riverwalk. We're the official sponsor of Dying the Riverwalk Green this morning and this afternoon. Got so it. we have a, a, a party going on today. We have lots of people. We have green beer. We have a green river. Yep. And of course, we got some great food and beverages. Well, let's too. talk about what you have here. <laughs> well, today, you know, we're known for fish and chips, yards, kilts, and fun. And this is our fish and chips. And we have our scotch eggs and our bangers and mash. We actually source the bangers. It's a local uh, butcher does the Irish uh, sausages for us every day. So that's some of our food that we have uh, offering today. And then obviously the green fun drinks. Yeah, we have a, long, a, a Riverwalk tea, which is a Long Island tea green, kind of like the Riverwalk today. And then of course green beer. Green beer, that's yeah. huge. That's like, yeah. our photographer's That's a 46 like, ounce yard. That's bigger than uh, me, look at that. Oh my you have to have two people drink that by law in yes. Texas. That's okay, right. yes, yes, we always gotta be, yeah. gotta be safe. But yeah. you can see the crowds are huge here. I think the boat took off, I can't tell. So on Saturday, uh, we're gonna the, the dye is a it's a very safe dye for all of the aquatic animals, and it lasts for two days. So we dye it today on St. Patty's Day, and we dye it again at one o'clock on Saturday. And then there's gonna be an official uh, a Riverwalk parade on Saturday at four o'clock. So come down to the Riverwalk for that. There's all kinds of events down here this weekend. We have today we're dyeing the Riverwalk, and of course it's St. Patty's Day, and we're having a lot of events ourselves. And then we're gonna have a tater tot eating contest at La Vita on Friday. And then a parade again on Saturday. So all kinds of fun things going on in the Riverwalk in San Antonio this weekend. Fun. And if you didn't recognize there are two huge leprechauns that are out here as well. And the bagpipers were here earlier. Just a whole bunch of fun people. Look at this guy. Yeah, we're just having a good old time. Uh, bagpipers will be coming out here soon. And if you come down, people can still come out and enjoy the rest of the day, right? Yeah, here. so the Mad Dogs uh, restaurant group has a uh, multiple venues down here you know we've got uh, all kinds of fun at all of our events all the way till two o'clock tonight so uh, mad dogs is just getting ramped up the band started uh, the green beer is pouring and everyone's having a great time uh, we also have maddie murphy's and some other places on the riverwalk it's going to be a blast all right perfect well i will send it back to you guys obviously it's a great time out here be safe if you come down and then plan accordingly it's very very packed Aaron, thank you My so pleasure. much i'm going to send it back to you guys cheers to st patrick's day cheers Yes, indeed, Al. Oh, that looks like so much fun right. down there. There's nothing like doing a live shot when there's about a million people behind you. But oh, it's so great to see folks out there. I and, know, and celebrating. so much yes. fun. All right. Well, of course, for more information on Mad Dogs British Pub, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just snap that QR code on your screen. That's great. That's good to be doing it today, and then also dine the river again on yep. Saturday. So, all right, it's a lot of fun, and you don't have to travel to Ireland for the experience. We learn about traditional Irish sports that you can play right here in San Antonio. Plus, we see a competitive Irish dance and may learn a few steps to start stretching. All right. Well, Mike be crowned Lord of the Dance. We'll see. <laughs> I need my sandwich first.